Welcome back to Search Ahead. Today we will be talking to one of our colleagues in Malawi, Professor Niengo Mkandawire. We will be learning a little bit more about the region while reviewing his professional career that you will see, it is very interesting. Professor Mkandawire, how are you? It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, thank you for finding the time for us. Uh, how is everything over there? Firstly, thank you very much for, for inviting me to be part of this uh, uh, exercise, I appreciate it. So uh, it's a pleasure to to be with you and talk to you and maybe share some of, some of the things I know with the wider audience out there. Thank you very much. I guess you started your career when you decided to stop your studies in chemistry and, and went to Australia to the University of Flinders in Adelaide to study medicine there. How do you leave those times? How, how was your, your experience of those times? And why did you decide to go across the world to, to the other side of the world to, to study medicine? It's an interesting question that uh, I, uh, you've asked me. Uh, firstly, the at the time I was uh, finishing high school, there was no medical school in Malawi. So anybody wanted to do medicine would have to go outside. Traditionally, would go to neighboring countries like uh, Zimbabwe and Kenya in Nairobi. And uh, quite a few went to the UK and uh, maybe to the, to, to, to the United States of America. But uh, at that time, everybody who wanted to do medicine would have to go outside, mostly sponsored by the government because uh, it wouldn't be possible for most people to sponsor themselves. So high school students would apply and get uh, what we would call a government scholarship to study, to study outside. Now, I, at the time of high school, I thought I would do engineering, in fact. Uh, but uh, when medicine, they gave us opportunities that uh, if you wanted to study medicine, you can go outside the country. Uh, my mind changed. <laughs> so I picked uh, medicine mainly to go and see the world out there. It just shows maybe I wasn't very mature in my thinking at that time that what I really wanted to do in life because I chose medicine as a way of getting out of the country to see the rest of the world. But that's another a story for another day. But it was not until the end of 1989 that you, you started as a surgeon in, uh, in, in Africa, right? Your first work in Africa uh, as a surgeon. And I really like to know how was surgery like then? And, and what do you think, what do you think have been the, the biggest achievements that have been, um, that have happened in, in Africa since then? After studying in Australia for six years, because the medical degree is six years, and then doing one year of internship, I returned to Malawi in 1992. And it so happened that 92, 93, 94 was a very politically uh, turbulent uh, season or, or period for us in Malawi. That's when we're changing from my one party a system of government, a multi-party system of government. So there was a lot of political change and I landed back in the country in 92 amidst a lot of political change. Lots of drama happened and uh, I must say that I was actually involved, not directly involved, but uh, also caught up in the, in the drama. Uh, I wouldn't want to say I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a prison convict, but I did spend uh, a day or two in a prison cell, uh, particularly for fighting uh, against uh, uh, the police that were sending tear gas into the hospital. And for that action, I spent a, a couple of hours or a couple of days in jail, but my colleagues came to my rescue and I was uh, released without any charge, I must say. I'm, 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 I'm a good citizen, I think. In <laughs> uh, 95, I went to the, to the UK, to the Northwest region of Mersey, and started my orthopedic training there. And I finished in 1999. And that's when I returned to Malawi. So that's the point where you're asking what was surgery then. Uh, at that time, there was very few Malawian surgeons uh, in Malawi. Uh, unlike our neighboring countries who had established medical schools in the, early, in the 60s and 70s, we didn't have a medical school in Malawi until 1991, 92. So you could see that medical training was behind and uh, certainly surgical training was non-existent. So at that time in 1999, when I came back, our medical school had just graduated its first group of students and there was no postgraduate training in country at that time. We had very few Malawian surgeons, maybe three or four, including uh, myself. Most of our surgeons were expatriate surgeons uh, from all over the world, mainly UK and Dutch uh, nationals who came on various uh, technical aids to Malawi government from their respective governments. 
So that was uh, surgery at that time. Uh, most of the surgery uh, was done by these expatriate surgeons who were training uh, local GPs and general surgeons and also clinic officers to perform uh, surgical uh, procedures. But uh, moving on, uh, as we matured and our medical school started maturing, we started having local uh, training programs in uh, various postgraduate programs, uh, including, uh, including surgery. To the extent that now we have postgraduate surgical training programs in general surgery, orthopedics, ENT, plastic surgery, neurosurgery, and, uh, uh, and uh, I think I mentioned orthopedics. So that's the tr transition from about 99 when I was coming back to now, uh, 2020. We have local training programs that are putting out surgeons uh, uh, every four or five years. So that's a, that's a transition we've had. The issues of uh, other surgical practitioners like clinic officers have also been strengthened so that uh, although we're training surgeons, we're still nowhere near enough the capacity that we need. So we still have to train other paramedics and, uh, and physician surgeons to be doing some of the work, especially in the district hospitals. Having local training programs uh, within country is very important in uh, you know, building local capacity, but also returning, retaining the surgeons or doctors or whatever specialists in the country where they are, they are from. Uh, once you send somebody outside abroad for training, the chances of them coming back reduce, start reducing quite uh, remarkably, especially if they go there as young, they start developing a career, maybe they get married, maybe they meet all sorts of other uh, pool factors that keep them there um, career-wise in terms of postgraduate training, you, we tend to lose them. So the, the, the trick really is uh, to train uh, as much as possible locally, uh, understanding that sometimes some of the local training here may be deficient in some specialist areas, but you can always send people out for short periods, maybe a, a year or six months for fellowships to go and acquire some specialist skills and come back, but let them get their the bulk of their uh, specialization training locally. That's what keeps uh, people in the country of origin. And if we want to talk about your personal achievements, what is the, the thing that you are uh, most proud of? I don't know. Uh, I'm just happy to be working and serving people in Malawi. Uh, but uh, um, I think what I take pride in most is uh, being able to say that uh, I have contributed to expanding the uh, surgical training programs locally uh, in general surgery and in, and in orthopedics uh, uh, through actual training people, but more importantly also through grants to get uh, capacity building grants to help with uh, increasing the number of local surgeons here. In the last five years, uh, we had a, a successful application of a grant with the NOHEAD project in the, with the Norwegian government, NORAD. And through that grant, we've trained uh, 34 surgeons in the last five years. So to me, it's, uh, training has always been uh, what I feel is uh, the most important thing that maybe I could have done, or maybe I've done, to increase the capacity of local surgeons um, in Malawi. And most of these surgeons are here, uh, they've finished their training, and they're working here. And I feel very proud that uh, through such grants and uh, through such support, have been part, a small part of uh, increasing the number of local surgeons uh, locally trained and bred in Malawi. So that, that, that's a, a reasonable, uh, that I feel I've achieved something. Of course, there's, then there's a personal aspect of, you know, academia and professorship and all that, but that's minor. Uh, I've had the pleasure and the honor of having been involved with the Lancet Commission on Global Surgery. I thought that was a highlight of my career because it exposed me to eminent uh, thinkers and uh, movers in the world of global surgery that I wouldn't have met if I had not joined that uh, exclusive group of Lancet commissioners. So that, that also is a, an achievement that I feel very proud of. As the interview got a little bit long, we decided to cut it into parts so you will be able to see the other bit next week. Take care, keep yourself safe, and be patient. We will be back.